Today I'm talking about how to guard the unity of the Spirit. This is part two, so you need to go back to part one uh, so you can uh, see and catch up. And, uh, in the, and so I'm talking about something that's so important, and that is there's certain things that the Bible tells us that we are to guard. The Bible says guard your heart with all diligence, uh, for out of it flow the issues of life. We're to guard our minds. Uh, we're put on the helmet of salvation to guard our minds. We're to guard with our faith. The Bible says, holding up the shield of faith, we are to squelch all the fiery darts of the enemy. So there's certain things that we need to guard in our life. And in the church, there's a major thing that we are to guard, and that is to guard the unity of the Spirit. Okay, It's found in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. And this is the Apostle Paul. He says this, Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called with all humility and gentleness with patience showing tolerance for one another in love being diligent listen to this to preserve the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace and so here paul is saying that we need to be proactive in guarding and being diligent to preserve another version says to guard the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So I'm going to jump in. I'm going to give you the five things that I talked about. Just I'll highlight quickly the five things I talked about in the last session. And then I have five more things that you can do proactively to guard the unity of the Spirit. And this can apply in your marriage. It can apply in your family. It can apply in your church, obviously. Uh, and, and it can apply in your small group or whatever your relationships you have. How do we guard the unity of the Spirit? Because where there's unity, that's where God's going to show up. Where there's unity, God commands a blessing. Where there's unity, you see on the day of Pentecost, it says they were in one place and they were in one accord, not a Honda. Uh, they were in one accord, which meant that they were in agreement with each other. They were in one mind and one heart, intent on one purpose. And that's when God's Spirit was poured out. So if we're going to see the Spirit of God poured out in our lives, in our churches, in our region, in our nation, we must have the unity of the Spirit. So let's pray, and we're going to jump right in on talking about what are things that we can do to guard the unity of the Spirit. So let's pray together. Father, I thank you again for your grace and mercy and for Jesus. Jesus, you came Lord, and died on the cross, not just for our sins, but also that we might be one as you and the Father are one. And so, Holy Spirit, we welcome you right now. We say, Holy Spirit, speak to us, and Lord, give us the grace we need to walk this out, because you want to come for a glorious bride, a bride that's not in disunity, but a bride that's in unity. God, I pray for everyone that hears this, for the blessing of the Lord to come upon them as they proactively work to guard the unity of the Spirit. I pray that in Jesus' name. Well, again, this is Fred Crop here at the Healing Rooms, and I want you to know that I have a YouTube channel under my name, Fred Crop, K-R-O-P-P, -P, and if you go there, I want you to go to my YouTube channel where I have over 300 videos that are designed to help you to grow and be strong in the Lord, and you can go there. When you get there, subscribe, click the bell, and click like, all right? So today we're talking about guarding the unity of the spirit in the last session i'm just going to highlight you can go back and listen to the details i gave you five things that you can proactively do to guard the unity of the spirit number one was walk in humility with god and with one another number two was don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to think number three was to esteem others greater than yourself number four was to look out for the needs of others, not just your own needs. Number five was to pray for one another. So now I'm going to give you five more things. This is number six on how to guard the unity of the Spirit. And here it is. It says in the, it, the theme scripture there in Ephesians, it says, guard the unity of the Spirit or preserve the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Everybody say the bond of peace. I don't know if you like people that say, hey, let's all say this. But anyhow, the bond of peace. Well, we're to guard the union spirit with the bond of peace. How do we do that? Well, here it is, number six, forgive quickly. That's right. When you get offended, and by the way, it's a promise of God. Jesus said offenses will come. We're all going to get offended from different times. And by the way, you can become more and more offense-free 
uh, but there's still going to things that are going to happen where you're going to feel offended and everything. So what do you do uh, with the offense? Because offense is now an opportunity for division. When I look at people who leave churches or churches that are divided, you know, they'll say, well, we just want to follow this person or we, we don't agree with that doctrine or whatever. But the real problem is an unresolved offense in their life. People leave because they got offended. And then they take the offense to another place, to another church. And then it goes on and on and on. And they keep going from place to place because they, and, they, and they become a tool in the enemy's hands to bring about disunity in the body of Christ. So here we're supposed to guard the, the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So bond of peace. How do we do that? By forgiving quickly. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 and 13, it says this. So Paul writes and says, So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion. There's a good word. Put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. So here's a great tool that I'm putting in your hand right now on how you can guard the union of the Spirit. That is to forgive quickly. Uh, here Paul says that, he says we need to walk and you know, put on a heart of compassion, okay? To, 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 you know, to give people the benefit of the doubt. You know, when people do something that offends you, um, I would say 80, 90% of the time, they don't even know they're doing anything you know, they're not not intentionally trying to offend you. They just do something, say something, neglect you. They forgot to send you a Christmas card or whatever, and you get offended about that, and they don't even know it. Well, why don't you just give them the benefit of the doubt? Why don't you just put on a heart of compassion and love them? And the Bible see here it says to be kind to them and walk in humility and gentleness and patience, bearing with one another. Now, why would he put bearing with one another? Because we need to bear with one another. You know, some say we have to put up with other people's weirdness, right? I mean, nobody else is weird, you know, every, or I should say it this way, everybody else is weird, it's just not me. No, hey, there's something weird about all of us, right? There's something that irritates people in our personality or how we say things or how we you know, walk through life and all that. And so here Paul says, I want you to bear with one another. And that means to put up with things that, you know, maybe aren't your thing, right? Maybe that, you know, your spouse, you know, they squeeze the, the, the toothpaste tube at the wrong end and you just don't, don't like that. Or they've got the toilet paper turned the wrong direction. And, you know, there's, it's so funny, the little things that we get irritated about. Why don't we just bear with one another? And why don't we be quick to forgive when they do offend us? And so one of the ways we guard the unity of the Spirit is to walk in forgiveness out of a heart of compassion. See, disunity starts when we allow unforgiveness to stay in us and grow into bitterness. So we got, there's a progression. When we have unforgiveness in, it, if we, in us and we don't resolve it, we don't deal with it, we don't forgive and make a choice to forgive, soon it starts to become resentment. And then resentment goes to bitterness and bitterness goes to anger and we want to retaliate and so how many of you know if we're all full of anger and bitterness we're not going to have any unity in the church so if we want to have unity we have to be quick to forgive number seven here's the seventh thing those of you who are jumping in right now i'm talking about how to guard the union of the spirit and we need to understand how important we need to lift up unity above my thing above what i want what i think my opinion and so, uh, how do we guard the union of the Spirit? So this is number seven. That's what I'm talking about. I've given, I'm giving 10 things. I've already given you five in the last uh, video, and this one I'm giving you five more. So here's another one. Outdo, this is number seven, outdo one another in showing honor one to another. That's Romans chapter 12, verse 10. It says this, Paul writing again, love one another with brotherly affection outdo one another in showing honor to one another. Okay, let me read that again. Love one another with brotherly affection, outdo one another in showing honor for other people. You see, it's real easy to have unity when you're going around honoring other people, celebrating them, telling them what a great job they did. You know, I just, here, I work uh, here out of the healing rooms here in Santa Maria, 
And I, when I get up in the morning, I get up for, and, for, you know, I remind myself a couple of a couple of things. Number one, I want to get up to love people all day long. That's what I want to do. I want to wake up, and my job is to go out and love people. And then secondly, I want to go out and build people up and edify people. And the way I do that is by honoring them, by telling them how great they are. And, you know, even if they're, you know, maybe they're, you know, uh, not doing so good. Maybe they're the kind of people sometimes you want to slap them. What if you just begin to call out the best in them? What if you begin to honor other people and, and, and give them honor, even when they don't deserve it? Well, you know, you're thinking, yeah, well, I'd honor them, but they deserved it and they don't deserve it. Well, nobody deserves it. You don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. Only There's only one person that deserves the honor and the glory and the praise, and his name is Jesus, right? And so, we have the opportunity to go around and, and we can proactively guard the union of the Spirit by honoring other people. Look for the great thing in them. Look for the good thing in them and begin to tell them about them. I just love it. I just enjoy doing that, going around as I talk to people and I run into people. Even whether they're Christians or not, doesn't matter. Go, if you go around with a, with a intentional or being intentional about honoring other people you know i'll just tell you one thing you're going to be a happier person and you know what people are going to like to see you when they see you coming that's right you know some people uh, when they see certain people coming they're like i need to hide i need to go go down the other aisle of the store you know but how how would you like to be the person that when they see you coming they can't wait for you to get there why because they know you're going to say something good about them you're going to encourage them so number seven is Outdo one another. Number six was forgive quickly. Number seven is outdo one another in showing honor to one another. Wouldn't that be a great goal to live by? Number eight, walk in love with one another. So again, our theme verse in Ephesians chapter five, verses one and two, it says, "Be." Uh, this isn't our theme verse, sorry. It was Ephesians four, but Ephesians five, verse one and two, it says this: "Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk." in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. So here he says, be imitators of God, walk in love as Christ loved us. Now I want you to think about this with me. You know, Jesus walked around with 12 guys who had all kinds of issues. They, you know, they, I mean, they're fighting over who's going to be the, the greatest. Right? They're complaining about one another. They don't like each other. They, they're irritated by one another. But Jesus demonstrated love to them every day. He believed in them. He believed the best about them. He called out the best in them. And he chose them in all their imperfections. Why? Because Jesus came, because the Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have her everlasting life. So Jesus came to manifest the love of God. And so guess what? One of the major things that promotes unity in the body of Christ is love. That's right. The Bible actually says in Colossians, I'll just read it to you here, Colossians 12, uh, Colossians 3, 12 to 14, it says, so as those who have been chosen by God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other, whoever has a complaint against one another, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Now listen to this. This is verse 14. Beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. How are we going to have unity in the body of Christ? When we get a fresh baptism of the love of God. The more we have the love of God in us, the Bible says we first receive his love and then we're to give his love. The Bible says love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then it says love your neighbor as yourself. So we use all our love on God. What do we got left? None. So what do we got to do? We got to get God's love in us so that we can get God's love through us. And so we are to put on love. Let me think about that. This morning you got up and you put on some clothes. I'm assuming you're not walking around naked wherever you are. But you put on some clothes. You were proactive about it. You thought about it. You put on a certain pair of a dress or a pair of pants or a shirt or certain shoes that you put on. You thought about it and you put it on. I'm going to put on. Well, some of you didn't think about it. I, I understand that. Okay. That's just a joke. All right. But here it says, beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. So if I'm reading that right, every day when I get up, besides putting on 
you know, my shirts and my pants and my shoes and my socks and all that. I'm supposed to put on love. So I can put on the love of God. Uh, so here it says in 1 Peter chapter uh, one, or First Peter chapter four, verse eight. It says this: Most important of all, continue to show deep love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. You see, one of the reasons we get into division or we get into disunity is because we see somebody else's sin and we just want to expose it, or we are uh, we, that makes us feel better about ourselves. They sinned, and I haven't done that sin, and so I must be more holy than they are, or whatever we do, want to think. But the Bible says love covers a multitude of sins. You know what? The love of God has covered a multitude of your sins. And so we're to cover one another's sins. I don't know if you remember the story of Noah, that after he got out of the ark, and it says he planted a vineyard, and he got drunk by it, and, uh, and one of his uh, children of one of his sons went and exposed him, I saw him naked. He was because he was drunk. He got naked, and he went in, and he saw his uh, his father naked, and uh, and it was one of his sons. And it says he went out and told everybody else about it. But it says the two other brothers went in. And they put a blanket on their shoulder between each other, and they backed in and they covered him up, and so that he was not exposed. Well, love covers multitudes of sins covers other people's imperfections and so if we're going to have the bond of unity or if we're going to have uh, unity in the body of Christ we must learn how to walk in love with one another that was number eight so number again number six was forgive quickly number seven was outdo one another in showing honor to one another number eight is walk in love and number nine is see yourself and others the way God sees you 2 Corinthians 5.17. That's, here's a verse you should have memorized. 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So if anyone is in Christ, the Bible says they're a new creation. One verse says new creatures in Christ Jesus. And so they're a new creation. And our job is, is to see people as new creations. So if you see, first off, it starts by, starts by seeing yourself. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. The old things, and the old things passed away. The word passed away means they died. They've been buried. When we say so-and-so passed away, we mean they're dead. They're not here anymore. And so here it says, if you're in Christ, you're a new creation. All the old person you used to be is dead and gone. All things have become new. And so see yourself as a new creation and see others as a new creation as well. In 2 Corinthians 5, 16, it says this. Paul writes, this is the verse before 5, 17. He says, therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet we know him thus no longer. So he says, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. No, we're not looking at your flesh. You know, your flesh is always going to be your flesh. Your flesh is always going to have issues. But we're not to look at each other, and we're not to um, see uh, ourselves or other people as in the flesh, but we're to see who they are in Christ. So one of the ways we guard the unity of the Spirit is to see ourselves and others the way God sees us. And then here's number 10. Choose to believe the best about other people. Now, this is a choice. You can choose to believe the best about other people. You know, we, have, we live in such a negative society. The, the YouTube and all the Internet has gone crazy. All they want to do is point out everybody's mess and everybody's uh, the worst things about people. That makes the news. People always want to listen to negative news over positive news and everything. But that's not what's going to create. How many of you see that in America, it's creating disunity all across between family members, between friends, between, you know, churches, between areas, between uh, all kinds of, you know, uh, Democrats versus Republicans and all this. We, why? Because we're pointing out the worst in everybody else. And so love chooses to believe the best about each other. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 13, which is the love chapter, right? So in the love chapter, it says this, love is patient. This is chapter 13, verses 4 through 7 of 1 Corinthians. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy or boast. 
It's not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things. Listen to the next phrase, believes all things. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. What does it mean to believe all things? It doesn't mean you believe everything. I'm just going to believe any old doctrine or any old thing that comes down the pipe. No, that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about believing the best of other people, right? Uh, you know, again, I'm not saying that people don't do anything wrong things. They don't, I don't saying they don't sin. I'm not saying that they don't need to be corrected. I'm not talking about any of that. In fact, the Bible says faithful are the wounds of the friends of a friend, deceitful are the kisses of the enemy, kisses of an enemy. Deceitful are the wounds of, or, or faithful are the wounds of a friend. I <laughs> misquoted that. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Deceitful are the kisses of an enemy. So we, you know, a friend can con confront, you know, can confront a friend. But it says we're supposed to confront one another out of love. But first, before that, how about we believe the best about people? So if we're going to guard the union of the spirit, we have to choose to believe the best about others. In Philippians chapter two, verse three. And this is in the New Living Translation. It says this, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. And so it's looking for the good in everyone. So let me end this session by going over one more time the things that we can do proactively. See, guarding the unity of the Spirit is extremely important. When Jesus comes back, he's coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, a bride that's walking in unity. You know, you imagine a, a bride, a, a husband that's, you know, waiting for his bride to come down the aisle, and here she comes, but she can't decide which way she should go. She's going back and forward because she's in disunity. She's arguing with herself. You know, the guy's thinking, what, what, did I, what am I marrying right now? Well, Jesus is coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, a bride that's walking in unity with one another. So how do we guard the unity of the Spirit? Number one, walk in humility with God in one another. Number two, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. Number three, Esteem others as greater than yourselves. Number four, look out for the needs of others and not just your own needs. Number five, pray for one another. Number six, forgive quickly. Number seven, outdo one another in showing honor to one another. Number eight, walk in love with one another. Number nine, see yourself and others the way God sees you. And number 10, choose to believe the best about others. So I want to end this by praying for you. Because I believe it's just essential. We have to see unity as one of the highest callings of purpose. If we're going to glorify Jesus, if we're going to magnify the Lord, if we're going to lift Jesus up, it's because we're going to walk in unity with one another. So I want to pray for us, and I want you to take this, what I'm sharing, this last two uh, videos, and you need to get these videos out there or others, because you know what the body of Christ needs? It needs to come into unity with one another. So let me pray that this message will spread everywhere and it will spread through you and you'll be proactive in applying these things that you can do that will guard the unity of the Spirit. So Father, I pray for everyone watching this video right now and that will have watched the, this last video I did. This is part two of how to guard the unity of the Spirit. I pray that we will be those who are, who are contributing to the unity of the Spirit, not taking away from it. I pray that we would go about seeing the best in people, calling the best out of them, seeing what you've created them to be and do. Lord, calling them the new creature they are in Christ. God, I pray for that, and we pray in agreement. Come on, let's pray in agreement together. We pray in agreement together for the unity of the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, hey, this is Fred Crop again coming to you from the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center, and by the way, I have my own YouTube channel under my name, Fred Crop K-R-O-P-P. -P. You can find all the videos that I've done, over 300 videos that are there to equip you, help you, encourage you, strengthen you, and if you have, you hit on one of my videos and you like the notes from that video, just email me at F Crop K R O P P nineteen forty eight at gmail.com. That's F Crop K R O P P nineteen forty eight at gmail.com, and I'm happy to send you a copy of the notes. All right. In the meantime, I want you to know that God loves you, Jesus loves you, and I love you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters.